horror fans, Frightener22 here, and it is my displeasure to welcome you to day 27 of my 31 Frightening Days of Halloween marathon. Now, the reason I say displeasure is because, unfortunately, we're taking a look at 1988's Scarecrows. Now, you must be wondering why I'm so pissed off to actually review this movie. The main drive to review this movie was because um, a few months ago I was actually at a local FYE and I figured that I would stock up on a lot of obscure slashers that they had in stock that either I may have seen, had never seen, had heard things. Nonetheless, if I see a slasher and whether I loved it, hate it, never saw it, whatever, I just like to have like a good variety. I like to collect just pretty much anything and everything in the slasher genre. And Scarecrows was one of the films that I just had never gotten to, so I figured... What the hell, the 31 frightening days of Halloween Marathon would be the perfect opportunity to get my ass in gear, finally watch it, and hopefully review it. Because, hey, I love horror films that have to deal with scarecrows, who doesn't? So, unfortunately, this movie was such a fucking piece of shit that it's going to be really um, hard to review this because I just have such, um, I was just so displeased with it all around. But, anyway, here it goes. This film was actually written and directed by William Wesley, who, this film was actually his directorial debut, and he only has a very small body of work after this. He only directed one episode of Monsters, and then he never returned to direct a feature film until 2001, with a film entitled Route 666, which starred Lou Diamond Phillips. Now, after seeing this film, it's probably um, really um, understandable as to why he probably has such a small body of work. Because, like I said, this movie is such a fucking piece of shit. The plot in this um, shows the story of ex-military criminals who just pull off a multi-million dollar heist, and they abduct a pilot and his daughter to fly them to Mexico to, you know, get a clean getaway. Um, it isn't until one of their comrades double-crosses them and skydives out of the damn plane with the money that they just, um, that they just stole, and he lands in a desolate field overrun by, um, creepy-looking scarecrows with only, um, one nearby abandoned farmhouse. So, obviously, his group of, you know, ex-friends are pretty pissed, so they, you know, land the plane and go on a hunt to find him. It isn't until that these creepy, haunted-looking scarecrows begin coming alive and fucking shit up for everybody. Now, thinking about it on the surface, this plot sounds pretty cool, because when you think of scarecrow-related films, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I think scarecrows in a horror film, I just always kind of put them... You know, I, I always had this vibe that they're going to go for something in the vein of, like, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, something a little bit more southern, a little bit more country, and that's cool because I expect that, I like that, I kind of want that in a scarecrow film. But to see the plot um, with this film and it incorporating scarecrows, it's actually quite intriguing because it's like, oh, well, well, that's pretty damn original. That seems uh, pretty unique. I'm engaged. I'm intrigued. Well, so was I, but once you see this 83-minute pile of doo-doo, you'll probably realize what a waste of time the whole thing really was. Because just, oh man, this film is just so not scary. It's just terrible. And the acting in it, this is such a cheap shot. Because let's face it, we don't watch these films for... Academy Award winning acting or wonderful acting. If we get decent acting or at best good acting, it's a real, you know, it's a treat. You know, we're not expecting the most out of this, but I just can't deny the acting in Scarecrows. Everybody is just really, really lame and over the top and just, they're just bad actors. I mean, everybody is just so uninteresting to watch. It's just really like, it just becomes a chore to watch them after the first 20 minutes. I mean, when I watch this, it got to the point where you just kept seeing these images of the scarecrows in the fields, and it was just pretty much these, you know, ex-military criminals trying to find their friend with the money, and that becomes, like, the first 40 minutes of the damn movie. So it just, you don't really get the sense that you're watching a horror film, um, you know, with uh, scarecrows, you know, prominently, you know, in the plot line. You just feel like you're watching some really bad, um, you know, action movie or something. So that was something that really ticked me off from the beginning. And then at that, at once I realized that I was only 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes into it, it was like pulling teeth to try and finish, um, trying to finish this movie because it was just so bad. I mean, like I said, the acting was really, really terrible. The directing was so bad. And I have to say for a directorial 
directorial debut. You know, I'm not expecting the world, but I expect, you know, at least some, you know, some decent things, you know, happening there. I certainly don't expect laziness, and that's exactly what this director gave us. Now, the most um, apparent part of, you know, director laziness in this film is, if any of you guys have ever seen it, there's this constant, um, there's this constant thing in the film where the director, um, in between, like, um, shots of, like, a murder or something happening, like, you know, amongst the characters, it always will, you know, um, it will always cut back to these three scarecrows that are on, um, you know, their wooden crosses. Now, the thing that was bugging me is that you see this so many times throughout the film, and you would, one would expect the director would, I don't know, maybe change the shot up, light them in a different way. No, it's the exact same three shots again, and again, and again, and again. It was just so annoying. I'm like, how lazy can you be? How lazy, you know, could you have been? And just how, like, you know, how hard could it have been to just, you know, place the camera in a different way, make it look, you know, slightly creepier, or slightly scarier. It was just annoying to see those same, you know, shots come up again of the same scarecrows every single time. It just got so tired. I mean, like, it got to the point where you just didn't even want to see the damn scarecrows anymore. The only time that I ever wanted to see them, I never did see them. They always came, you know, when you least, you know, at times where, like, you were already done, like, you just, you know, were just so uninterested in where the scenes were going that when they finally popped up to kill somebody, you didn't care. You're just checking your clock in hopes that this film would fucking be over already, but it wasn't. So, moving on, if, there, if there's one decent thing that I can say, and I mean decent on the smallest scale, the Scarecrow designs are... They're all right. I mean, they look, you know, when the, the film first opened up, I thought they looked pretty unique, but then the more and more I saw of them, they really weren't that great. They're not the worst of the worst, but they are nowhere near the best. They're slightly below the decent line, and that's really the nicest thing that I could possibly say about this film. That really is it, but, you know, like I said, this just all boiled down to, you know, a film in my collection that I just hadn't gotten to, and I figured, hey, how can you go wrong with another Scarecrow film? Oh yeah, you can go real fucking wrong with 1988's Scarecrows. So if you guys have never seen this film, this is certainly, under no circumstances, crucial Halloween watch, uh, you know, watching territory at all. This is just definitely not something that you need to see at all um, this Halloween season. But if you're like me and you're a hardcore horror fan, especially slasher genres, and you just need to consume and see everything, take a chance on it. But take my review as a huge, huge fucking forewarning, because this movie was terrible, god-awful. I probably will never watch it again. Some may say I'm being pretty harsh on it, but, you know, that's just the way I feel on it. I just feel like this was really boring. But, you know what? Nonetheless, this is day 27 of my marathon, and I mean, you know, one shit stinker out of them all isn't so bad out of 27 days so far, so... I'm really sorry to disappoint you guys this month with, you know, such a shitty, crappy review of a really shitty movie, but I guess that's what you get. But as always, guys, tune in yet again tomorrow for another review, and I can guarantee that tomorrow's review will definitely redeem this shitstorm that was laid upon me tonight, and I'm sure tomorrow's review will definitely whet all you horror fans' appetites tomorrow for sure. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is Frightener22.